nothing less than an American legend. For more than a century, they have covered the backsides of miners and movie stars, cowboys and bad boys, or just plain old you and me. And when they get old and faded, we love them even more. They're Levi's, the original blue jeans. In 1997, one of the earliest known pairs of these American blues sold for a whopping $25,000. A pretty penny for a pair of old denims. It all goes back to a guy named Loeb Strauss. Young Loeb was a Jewish immigrant who came to New York from Bavaria in the 1840s to join his brother Jonas's dry goods business. The first momentous thing Loeb did, he changed his name to Levi. It was easier to say and it didn't have those strange little dots above the vowel. The second, Levi moseyed on out to California. Jonas Strauss had decided that it was time to send the younger brother out west to open basically the West Coast branch of J. Strauss Brother & Co. So young Levi hopped on a boat which went down to the Isthmus of Panama. He took a mule or a train across the Isthmus, got out on the other side, hopped a Pacific Mail steamer, and arrived to the bustling, noisy, dirty, smelly city of San Francisco. Bustling and smelly because it was chock full of frontier men, grubbing and sweating for gold. Add to that a healthy portion of perspiring lumberjacks and builders, ranchers and rustlers. These tough guys were really tough on their clothes. So, Levi sold work pants made of a super strong fabric. Actually, the sturdy stuff normally used to make awnings or to upholster furniture. It was called denim. The pants were called waist overalls. One day, Strauss got a letter from a Reno, Nevada tailor named Jacob Davis. It seems that Davis had made one customer very happy when he put together a pair of work pants with a metal rivet here and there to keep the pants from tearing at the seams and pocket corners. Davis wanted to patent them, but he didn't have the $68 required by the U.S. Patent Office. So what does he do? He writes a letter to Levi Strauss, sends him a few pairs of the pants via Wells Fargo Express, and says, I have this money-making idea. If you'll pay for the patent, we can take it out together and make this brand new kind of work pant. What do you think? Levi's blue jeans were born on May 20th, 1873, when the U.S. government awarded Strauss and Davis the patent for riveted work pants. For 35 years, these two men had the exclusive right to make them. And they sold like crazy. Everyone out west was a potential customer, since just about everyone was roughing it. A lot of these men were working out in the middle of nowhere, so they're going to need clothing that is going to last them a long time. Strauss and Davis made a fortune selling pairs of denim jeans for about a buck fifty a pop. Sometime in the 1890s, the Levi Strauss Company sold this pair of blue jeans to a typical customer for about that price. Who was this mysterious denim wearer? His name, most likely a he since women rarely wore pants in those days, is lost. But with a little denim detective work, clues emerge through the worn spots. Blue jeans authorities call these faded streaks whiskers. Whiskers like these are usually left behind when the wearer spends a whole passel of time up on a horse. Another clue to our covert cowboy is found down by the cuffs. These are the spur bites. This is the kind of damage you get when you get the leg opening caught in some spurs. I actually have a spur here from the collection. And you can see this, these sharp points would really do a lot of damage to this denim. This range rider probably lived a good long way from the nearest town because these Levi's are extensively patched, even using the pocket from another pair of denim pants. And how did these rough and ready work pants wind up getting the white glove museum treatment? Well, by the 1920s, Levi's jeans were such a household name that folks just started calling them Levi's. Then in the 30s, Hollywood began to spread the mythology of the Wild West, and the cowboy became the brand new icon of American individualism. The rugged cool of Levi's jeans was born. Frontier customers were not only cool, they were stubborn, often as stubborn as the pants were tough. Go ahead, just try to change their Levi's. 
1954, we put zippers in the 501 jeans for the very first time. Unfortunately, we got a letter from one of our customers saying that he really didn't like this zipper. He said, now why did you go and put a zipper in these wonderful pants because it's like peeing into the jaws of an alligator. Also in the 1950s, jeans became synonymous with the gritty glamour of teenage rebellion. Brando wore Levi's in the wild one. Marilyn Monroe wore Levi's. These were daring, naughty idols, and American kids wanted to be just like them. Now that blue jeans were an American icon on their own, it was only a matter of time before they became collector's items. That time came in the 1980s, when Japanese collectors began frantically acquiring leftover objects from America's frontier days. Pants that would once have sold for a few bucks suddenly commanded thousands of dollars. In 1997, when a New York vintage store announced it was selling a turn-of-the-century pair of Levi's, Levi Strauss and Company sat up and took notice. The company, which lost its original archives in the 1906 San Francisco earthquake and fire, decided it would like to have these early Levi's for themselves. After confirming the authenticity of the pants, Levi Strauss and Company paid $25,000 for them. So it's not a bad idea to keep these valuable old jeans as close to the skin as possible. In 1998, a burglar broke into an Akron, Ohio vintage clothing store. The thief took only one item, more valuable than anything he could have found in the cash register. An old pair of Levi blue jeans, of course. Today, the 1890s blue jeans, one of the oldest known surviving pairs of Levi's, are kept in a fireproof safe in the Levi Strauss Company's archives.